nearly threw them across the room. I swear the universe is just not giving me a break at the minute. Hello my loves, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. It's currently Wednesday for me. I have been intending to update this vlog for a couple of days now, but I swear the universe is just not giving me a break at the minute. Not because there's anything particularly terrible happening, but I'm having a chronic fatigue flare up. I'm having plumbing issues in my flat. There's electrical issues going on within the building. Work has been super busy. I'm having an issue with my prescription. It's just lots of little things. <laughs> But hopefully all things I can sort, it just means that my brain has been here, there and everywhere for the beginning of this week at least. But I wanted to check in with you and let you know that I'm currently reading The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. This is an arc but it has now come out I believe. I do have the fairy loot edition but I'm just reading this copy because that's what I started with and it's just nice and comfy and floppy to hold. So I'm currently on chapter 18 which is page 268 and I am really enjoying this. I didn't really know what to expect because I don't typically get along with sea related stories, pirate stories, I just don't really like anything that's set at sea. But I really like the David Bad series by S.A. Chakraborty so I wanted to give it a go because that is one of my favourite series so I'm glad I did because I really like the writing style in this. This is a very interesting story about a pirate who did retire into domesticity and just to like raise her child but she's then offered an opportunity which no respectable pirate would pass up because the reward is very very great. So she ends up delving back into the life of a pirate and going on these adventures all over again. And it's quite interesting actually because she is a middle-aged woman, I think. 
I can't remember how old she is specifically, but she's not like within her 20s or anything, which is typically the age range of adults that you follow within adult fantasy, I feel. So that is already quite an interesting perspective, especially because she is a mother. So a lot of her motivations come through her care over her child, which typically I don't like reading about children just because I personally have no interest in them. <laughs> That sounds so terrible when you say it like that. I just, I'm not a child person, at least not at this point in my life, so I don't relate or have an interest in seeing children within fantasy stories, but it's proven to be quite an interesting motivation towards this story because you wouldn't really imagine pirate stories and children's go together too well, so seeing how those things merge and intersect is proven to be quite interesting. So I am enjoying having Amina as a narrator, especially because this is presented as if she is quite literally just sat in front of you narrating her story, telling you about all of her travels. And there are parts of the story where she intersects as if you've interrupted and she's kind of interacting with you as a reader or a listener more aptly. <laughs> I have actually started listening to the audiobook of this, which I do think works particularly well with this narrational style because of that storytelling vibe, especially when she does interject and kind of interrupt the path of the story to say something outside of it because the narrator of the audiobook will kind of become a little bit more muffled as if she's turned away. And there's just a really nice indicator that we have been interrupted and that it quite literally sounds like we're sat in a room with her. It's really interesting actually. But the story itself is one that I am very intrigued about because I'm not entirely sure where we're going with it. It's really quite slow moving. I can't tell if it's a story that's going to be kind of wrapped up initially within this book. I do believe it is a series, but I can't tell if the plot line that we've been introduced to in this book is one that's going to span over the entire series or if it's a case of this one will be wrapped up but then something else will be introduced. I don't know. I can't quite gauge it yet. It doesn't really feel too fantastical at the minute, which is quite interesting considering we do have a literal demon as a character. <laughs> So I'm wondering just how fantastical this book will feel, but I am definitely interested and engaged with the story. So I'll keep you updated on my thoughts on that as I continue to read it because I definitely do aim to finish this either tomorrow or Friday because this has been on my currently reading for a good few weeks now just because I ended up needing to prioritise reading The Blade itself for the live show for Catch Up Book Club. If you missed that and you have read the first book then I'll leave a link to that down below because I really enjoyed that discussion. It's the first one for Catch Up Book Club. If you want to join us for a book club, a read along then and now is the time because we've just started the series. So I'll leave a link to that down below. But yeah, I needed to put aside this one to read The Blade itself for a while. So this has been on my currently reading list for a couple of weeks now and it just feels like I've been reading it forever. So I do definitely want to get this one done. I do have some other books on the go, but I will tell you about them as I read more into them because I don't really know what I'm gonna do this evening. It's currently about 11 p.m. I've actually just filmed the video because I have been sleeping so much over the past 48 hours and I quite literally just slept most of today away. So I've only just managed to actually gather myself together to film. So I don't know if I'll do too much reading. I might actually read some of a witchy fiction book that I've got on the go that I'll tell you about tomorrow but yeah I'll I'll keep you updated I'll let you know when I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Blink.
God has this week been a whirlwind. <laughs> Somehow, things just kept going wrong with the house. I don't know if there's a home related planet that's shifted in alignment or if I have managed to piss off some kind of home and hearth related deity, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm fairly sure the majority of issues I could have with my house happened this week and also communication issues because after everything that I mentioned in my first update, on Thursday I had six power cuts in one day. <laughs> So I had to go around trying to find anywhere else that I could work because I do work from home. Which will be why you randomly saw Cody's cats at one point in this vlog because uh, yeah, I ended up stealing her Wi-Fi. And I had multiple issues with like the doctors, the letting agent that usually would have been very quick to resolve because their communication is usually grand. But for some reason this week, nothing was getting through until Friday yesterday. So it's currently Saturday. But on Thursday evening, I was just like, I've had enough. I'm doing every single form of communication, trying to contact people who can help me because I've had enough. I need these things resolved. And finally, I managed to get through to people and we finally have things on the move again. So it's been quite the um, low-key hectic week because while I really haven't had too much going on, there's just been lots of problems here, there and everywhere. So I have been very much looking forward to this weekend. Yesterday evening after work, I did attend the Samantha Shannon event in Edinburgh Toppings, which is always just so interesting. I found it almost nostalgic to look back on because the last time I went to a Samantha Shannon signing, and I've been to a fair few of them now, but the last time I did it, I lived in Sheffield and I would just visit all the ones in Yorkshire. Whereas now I'm here. Myself and Lauren went up to her together because she knows who we are, which is wild. <laughs> but it was the first time we were able to actually approach her together and just be like, hello. So that was really nice because she recognized us and was just like, oh my God, how are you? And it's just absolutely fascinating hearing her talk, the amount of stories that she just has in that brain of hers that she just rattles off in any signing when she's asked questions is fascinating. So very much enjoyed that and I did did get my two books signed. I got the Broken Binding Editions dedicated to me so we'd love to see it and I will be returning to reading this one via audiobook hopefully sometime soon and then generally because I had Lauren and Amy both of which I will leave their Instagrams down below I had them stay with me overnight and so this morning I was kind of just showing them some parts of Edinburgh that they hadn't seen before we did a little bit of book shopping and I did think that I would pick up a book and I did I actually picked up two because I don't think I have ever been so excited to stumble across a book that I haven't heard of before we went to Argonaut Books and I discovered this. This is a library of esoterica book. I have all of these so far and I didn't know that they had released another one. So they have volumes on witchcraft, astrology and tarot and they basically are just really stunning non-fiction books about those topics, going through the history of them, the art related to them. And they've released a new one that I didn't know about called Plant Magic, which is just Oh my god, I love it already. Even if I flick through, you can see just how much artwork is involved in this. These are some of my favourite books within my collection and I almost squealed in the bookstore when I saw that there was a new one out. And I had a nice little chat with the bookseller about them because he could tell how excited I was. <laughs> So I was not leaving this behind and I'm very glad I didn't because if I show you these, oh my god, they are so heavy. Oh, but, <laughs> but these are all of them together. They are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Hi. I just nearly threw them across the room and I'm fairly sure they would have gone straight through the floor. So yes, I was incredibly excited to see that and I was just like, I have to have it right now. Because once those books are out of stock, it can take a while for them to come back. So I was just like, give it to me now, please. But I did also pick up another book when I was there, which is The Faithless by C.L. Clarke. This is the sequel to The Unbroken. And I don't know if any of you remember, but I did do an interview with C.L. Clarke last year on my channel. I will leave a link to it down below. But I really enjoyed The Unbroken and I have been waiting for the release of The Faithless. This is just such an iconic cover. Everybody is obsessed with this cover and I can understand why. <laughs> it says rather ominously on the front that every queen will take her due and I just cannot wait to delve back into this world. So very successful book haul today. As for right now though, I think I'm going to just chill for a while, watch some true crime videos on YouTube. And then the agenda for this evening is to finish reading The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi because I am adamant I will finish it before this vlog is done. So stay tuned for more thoughts. <laughs> Actually, no way I have more thoughts right now <laughs> because I have started reading a witchy nonfiction book called Ashes and Stones. This is just the, just check it, I 
think I left the book next to my bed, but this quite literally just says it's a Scottish journey in search of witches and witness. I was gonna say wizards then. I quite literally just picked this up randomly from a bookstore last week because I felt it calling, you know? And I just started reading it straight away, which doesn't happen very often, but I haven't read nonfiction in a long time. I used to read it pretty consistently, but I kind of just went off it for like a year or so. But I've built up a nice little collection of witchy nonfiction books that I am desperate to read. So I'm using this one as I kind of tiptoe in, step back into it because I only intend to read like a couple of pages here and there, just picking it up whenever I fancy something a little bit different, something to dip into and then back out again. And so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm only about 50 pages in. So the basis of this book is that she is quite literally marking various journeys that she took around Scotland to visit these places that women were accused of witchcraft or where they previously lived, whether they are actually given some kind of memorial or not. And she has created a little map of sorts and is telling you what it looks like while also telling you about the women and their lives as well. But the prologue of this book really caught my attention because she explains how she is an American woman who has moved over to Scotland and claimed it as her home and she really delved into the discussion of ancestry and culture and how Americans see their ancestry and heritage as something entirely different from how Scottish people do. Which is a very prominent discussion I guess or I just feel like it's something that every single Scottish person I know has mentioned when they say how American people claim that they are partially Scottish because of their heritage whereas that's not how we specifically see it but it is just a difference in how heritage is perceived I guess. And she really dove into that and discussed her own experience with it, acknowledged the nuances of different cultures and I also just found it quite interesting to read from my own point of view being an English person who has moved to Scotland Obviously it's not as far as America, but the same kind of displacement still stands a little bit in terms of I have claimed Scotland as my home, but I can't necessarily say it's my heritage if that makes sense. So I personally just found that a really interesting topic and something that I was quite glad to see acknowledged and confronted because it's definitely the first time I've seen it spoke about in that way. And I think that it really just set up for how Alison Shaw is going to be considering multiple perspectives when it comes to the stories of the women that she is visiting. And already she's been kind of presenting what society thinks of these people or what the rumors were, how things have been misconceived. She's even mentioned how there are so many memorials or stories about these women which just aren't true. And yet memorials have been built based on rumor basically because there's so little information about it that people have kind of just gotten used to going off what people say. So I'm already just fascinated by this book and I really want to go and visit all of the places that are mentioned. I might actually make it like a little checklist of sorts so that I can see more of Scotland but also see more of the witchy history because that is something that I am particularly interested in. I'm kind of doing my own very slow moving research project when it comes to witchcraft in Scotland, just out of my own interest, like I'm not doing anything with it, but this is definitely contributing to the urge to just keep digging around and seeing what else is going on because it is just a part of history that I find absolutely fascinating. Although sometimes I get a bit too into it and then I have been reading about women being murdered for far too long and I'm just like, wow, this is really quite dreary. And at that point I take a break and stop, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a part of history that I am forever drawn to, forever baffled by, and I'm glad to be reading this book to continue with it. So I don't think I'll be finishing it this week because I am gonna be focusing on Amina al Sarafi, but I am gonna be picking it up here and there and hopefully we'll have it finished by the end of the month. So I will let you know my thoughts on that in my March wrap up. But otherwise I will be back to chat to you later about Amina al Sarafi. <laughs>
folks, it is now Sunday afternoon. I was gonna say evening, but it's still technically afternoon. I have just come off doing the Coven Call, which is a monthly video chat with my patrons who are in the Coven tier. So that is always such a highlight of my month. I love catching up with you guys. And I feel like it's just generally been such a peaceful day because alongside that, I've also went out for a walk this morning, which I did initially plan on just kind of staying inside, having a bit of a rest day. But I was on the hunt for matcha powder because I really wanna make matcha lattes. And for some reason, it's obscenely difficult to get hold of in a shop here. I've been trying for weeks and <laughs> I did manage to get some, but I would have preferred it to be a different brand. So I'm still looking into where the best place is to get it. If you're in the UK and you know of like a trustworthy source that you can get a matcha powder from, do let me know. Specifically the ones that you can get in bigger sizes because I feel like the ones I've seen come in really tiny amounts and I'm just like, why? But yes, yeah, so I went out searching for some of that and I also picked up some propagation supplies slash just general like seeds and growing supplies because it is a star of tomorrow, which means that we are heading into spring. Although another thing that I apparently am unable to find anywhere is lavender seeds. I thought that would be really common, but apparently not. I can't find it in any of the physical stores here and I don't typically like buying them just from like Amazon or something. I'd rather get it from an actual plant store, but none of them are selling them. So I don't really know where to go from here, but I am gonna be traveling a fair bit through next week. So I'm gonna see if I can like scope some out in, in all of my journeys. But I did end up picking up some mint, sage and tomato seeds just to see how they grow on my windowsill. I asked for some recommendations from the lady that worked there and that's kind of what she suggested doing because my window gets a lot of light and could basically act like a mini greenhouse. So I decided to make use of that and I would just love to be that person who can like make their own tea and things from things that I've just grown. I don't have a garden so I've just got to improvise with this windowsill. <laughs> and I also set about kind of fixing up some of my plants because some of them were looking a little bit worse for wear and I propagated a lot of the ones that I have to make sure that they do actually survive through winter because oh my god I didn't realize my little curly leaf one that hangs in my window was really not doing too hot but because it's above my head I didn't realize quite how um scraggly it had become so I tidied that up and I now just have like a little propagation station on my fireplace so once they have rooted in a few weeks I can pop them into some soil and hopefully have some new plants growing through spring so we're getting some color and some life back into this flat and I am very excited to actually feel motivated to do plant care because it's been a while since I have done and I did actually finish reading The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi. I ended up rating it three stars which is lower than what I initially thought it was going to be I was anticipating this coming out at a four star read, but it did end up being a three star read because I feel like there was a definite point within the book where the plot progression shifted from having Amina being kind of self-sufficient and the go-getter of the story to everything just kind of happening to her. There was definitely a long sequence of events where she was just being passed between different characters who were deciding her fate for her. And while I don't necessarily hate that sort of thing, it did just mean that there was a definite contrast between the beginning and the end of the story because we went from having Amina who was creating a situation and making the best out of everything to just dealing with the situation and going along with whatever happened. And I feel like it slightly changed the tone of her character in a way that I didn't necessarily vibe with. I don't know, it was a strange shift. And as I've said <laughs> countless times, I typically just don't get along with pirate themed stories. And I think come the end of this book, it started to feel a little bit long and dragging for me so I wasn't entirely won over but I do still stand by everything I said about the narrational style and the audiobook being incredible and I can definitely see now why this is going to be a series there is a very clear definitive way that this series is going to progress and I probably will continue with the series but I don't think it's going to be like a top priority or anything because yeah this book ended up being a little bit like middle of the road for me but I really appreciated seeing the Middle Eastern mythology and religion that was being interwoven into the story. You saw very distinctly that culture woven into the everyday lives of the characters. For instance there are very casual references of Amina having to adjust her headscarf to make sure that her hair was covered a certain way around certain people and having to do prayers while on the ship and things like that which I think is a less common thing that you typically see in fantasy books or at least the popular fantasy books that is so it was really cool to see that sort of thing and have it just feel so natural I guess. I obviously can't speak for the culture myself but I will see if I can find any reviews to link in the description box from reviewers of that culture but I haven't really seen any so far so it's going to depend on what I can find on Goodreads <laughs> because it has only just come out so we shall see but yes I am intrigued to see where the series goes and especially if it goes down the more fantastical route because the fantasy definitely did amp up towards the end of the story I might end up enjoying the later books in the series a little bit more but 
only time will tell. <laughs> but now I am going to just chill for the evening. I don't really have any plans. I'm gonna clean and then probably just do as little as possible in <laughs> this evening so that I can rest before my travel-filled week ahead, which you will of course end up seeing in another vlog. But I'm gonna wrap this one up here. If you've made it this far, then leave a plant emoji down below. We're gonna cover the comment section in plants for spring. I'd love to know if you are marking the introduction of spring in any way or if you've read any of the books I've mentioned. But for now I'm gonna love you and leave you a like on the rest of your day so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so we know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all the books I just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!